everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kaylee Gardner, and I'm going to be talking today about the importance of lifelong learning and digital skills. So we all know we need to embrace lifelong learning um, and keep up the constantly evolving digital landscape um, as a crucial way of staying, of keeping up personal and professional growth going in today's fast-pacing, changing world of work. So I initially had this really boring presentation about all the things you could do to stay up to date with the um, fast-changing world of work, and I thought, no, I can't do this. I need to give you my personal experience to perfectly demonstrate um, the importance of um, lifelong learning and continually, continuing to develop my own digital skills, letting you know the importance that has had on my own career. Um, so I'm Kelly. I'm the head of national community at Codebase. So we help people build and grow better tech startups. And we do this through collaboration. We work with government, um, we work with the third sector, we work with universities. Um, and our main goal is supporting being curious, being inquisitive, um, and helping people take those ideas from um, a simple idea in their mind to um, a genuine tech business in today's Scottish ecosystem. So, so far we have helped over 500 startups and scale-ups um, collectively raise over four billion pounds. Um, so we're definitely doing something right, and it's been really exciting being along this code-based journey. So a bit about me. Um, the thing about Codebase, what I said is we support curiosity and we reward people who are inquisitive. And I really think um, my journey has only been through being curious. So um, it starts here. I did the Emlet and the Gothic Imagination at Stirling Uni. Um, and then I stayed on to do a PhD in zombies, which proves you can literally do anything if you are curious. Um, and then I was an English lecturer here for a while. Um, so I did that for a couple of years, um, and I sort of got a little bit bored. It was sort of the same thing over and over. Um, and while I was here, I used to walk into town and pass this huge big building opposite the library. Um, it's uh, also opposite Weatherspoons as well. So um, you'll know it um, if you're in town often. Um, and I always wondered what happened there. So that curiosity led to me looking at their website, and they looked really cool. I knew they helped tech startups. Um, I didn't at that point really understand what a tech startup was, um, but I said to myself, I will apply for the next job they advertise. Um, and within a month, they'd advertised the, a receptionist role. So I thought, it's a big career change, but I'll do it. So I became the receptionist at Codebase Sterling. Um, and uh, one of my jobs there was um, sort of manning the desk while we ran our digital skills clubs for young people. So we ran two, one for boys um, and girls, um, and noticed that um, girls' attendance was really, really low. So we decided to run a girls-only club. Um, so we got girls into the building, taught them digital skills, um, and once they were comfortable with that, we saw our mixed club increasing in female attendance. Um, and I used to get really frustrated um, in like my limited capacity to support young people. And I thought, um, I felt a bit useless, really. I was at these clubs talking about the importance of coding and digital skills, and I didn't know how to do any of that myself. So that Christmas, I went um, home for two weeks and spent the whole two weeks teaching myself how to code. Um, and so I taught myself how to use all of the programs we supported the young people with. And I came back in January, um, and I began leading on those programs. Um, and soon enough, I was leading our entire digital skills for young people program. Programs. Um, at the same time, I was learning how to harness uh, social media. Um, I became the voice of Codebase Sterling, um, and I soon was running our social media. Um, I was also really interested in events um, and was soon running our events as well, and eventually became the community manager for Codebase Sterling. Um, and over that time, um, the work I was doing with young people and digital skills, which was essentially a hobby, it was all self-taught, I knew nothing about coding um, before moving to Codebase, um, started getting recognized. So I was nominated for a Scotland Women in Technology Award. Um, I won the Scotland IS and Hero Award, um, and I won um, a Women in Technology Award for the whole of the UK. 
Um, and through those opportunities, which were purely rewards for my own curiosity, um, I was asked to work at Heart of Midlothian Football Club running their innovation centre. So I left Codebase, moved to Heart, and was the digital education program manager, where I was responsible for setting up a five-year program to support digital skills education um, in um, the surrounding area of Hearts Football Club. And I never would have had that opportunity if it weren't for me being curious and wanting to learn more about digital skills and what you could do with them. So I did that for a year, um, and I was really successful at that, and I'd learned so much in that role that when a new role opened up at Codebase, they asked me to come and interview for it. Um, I was successful, and I returned to Codebase, bringing all my, that experience from Hearts back to Codebase, um, and I'm now head of national community. So my remit has changed. I'm no longer based in Codebase Sterling, but um, I have a national remit across our seven hubs. Um, so we have hubs in Stirling, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Dundee, Inverness, Aberdeen, and the south of Scotland. So our footprint has grown, um, and being able to put myself out there and be curious about things has meant that my remit within the company has grown, and I'm able to spread um, my experience across more of Scotland than initially. But this is not just my story. It sounds quite unique, but it's not really. Our company is full of people who have had these squiggly careers. Um, so we have Ali. He studied maths at university. He was a bartender. Um, and he was an education coordinator at TechCube. Long story short, TechCube led into Codebase. And while he was at Codebase, he was community manager, then head of bridge programs, head of partnerships, and head of community. But at the same time, he was teaching himself no code. So no code gives you the ability to build digital products without actually knowing how to code. Um, there's a lot of drag and drop boxes, and it makes um, digital products a lot easier to understand, a lot easier to build. Um, and while he was doing that, he was publishing his products on platforms that allowed people to upvote them. Um, he also started running events for people who were interested in no code. And he built up such a name for himself in what was essentially his hobby that he taught himself, that he was headhunted by Stacker. Stacker are an American-based um, drag and drop no code platform that was so impressed with the work he was doing, they asked him to work for them. So he left Codebase and um, stayed in Scotland because he could work remotely, but worked for this American organization for 18 months, um, purely based on what had been his hobby. Um, he built an amazing name for himself. We were really jealous um, of Stacker that they had Ali, and we really missed um, the uh, sort of intellect and the passion that he brought to Codebase. So we headhunted him back to Codebase, and he has now rejoined as Vice President of Research and Development. And that is purely based on his own drive to um, seek out knowledge and teach himself coding. Um, Dom is another success story like this. Dom studied construction science management um, and was a product management intern. And this interest in products led him to also um, study no code in his um, sort of private time as a hobby. This became quite a big hobby. He's got a very popular YouTube channel as well. Um, and it also led to him becoming a tech entrepreneur during the pandemic when he used no code to build a website to help find missing black people. So he recognized a problem within society and then used his passion for no code to build a product to solve this. And we are very lucky to have him at Codebase now now running our online community. Um, this is everyone that currently works at Codebase, and stories like mine and Ollie's and Dom's litter this group of people. And it's purely down to their own drive to continuously learn, to grab opportunities, to go to events on topics they have an interest in, to network with people, and to put themselves out of their safe zone. Um, I think they would all agree that um, lifelong learning has led to where they are today and it will be the main thing driving their career forward in the future. So my main message from this talk is 
be inquisitive and stay curious because life often rewards that curiosity. Um, I know in my case and in my career, I've certainly been rewarded for being curious. So if you take anything away from this, it's be curious and stay, um, be inquisitive and stay curious. If you want to learn more, um, you can head on over to Codebase. We have loads of events. We've got a really um, busy jobs board as well. Um, if you'd like to learn more about TechScaler, if you have an idea for a tech startup, or if you want to learn more about startups, um, head on over to TechScaler and you can learn more about that there. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, my email address is on the slide, um, and you can email community at thisiscodebase.com to reach our wider community team. Um, thank you very much. Happy to answer any questions.